So to finish off the lecture, we'll look at the pizza example. I'm not going to go into this in great detail. Um, and actually, this is very similar to a pizza example in my other course in Programming Foundations. But I think it's worth uh, showing it with this one now has objects where we create pizza objects. OK, so the, the GUI code has, let's, let, let me show you the GUI code first of all. You, it will look familiar if you've seen the other course. Oops. I need to run the pizza app, not the pizza. So there it is. The user can check what type of pizza it is, and, and you'll notice the output here. This is just uh, information going to the console, what, um, what type of pizza is selected, and then uh, which extras, based on what the user selected in the checkboxes. When the user's decided what they want, they click Add to Basket, uh, and at that point, um, the the app constructs a pizza object and puts it in the basket. Uh, and this is like we did um, when we cre created random pizzas and put a whole bunch of random pizzas in a in a list. Uh, the basket is just a list of uh, the pizzas that the user's chosen. So I can choose another one, uh, some different toppings, add that to the basket, and now the basket we've got the total cost and the the contents of the basket down here um let's have another one okay the basket is just a list of these pizza objects and the, each pizza object knows about what type of pizza it is and the price and the the um the toppings attack that the user selected for it okay so let's have a look at the, the code so what are we going to need we're going to need radio buttons for the different types of pizza we're going to need checkboxes to choose the extras. Uh, we've got a read-only text field, this one here, giving the price of the pizza. Uh, the current, sorry, the price of the current selection. So that obviously updates as the as the user uh, selects things. Um, it's read-only, so you can't type in your own price. Uh, we've got a uh, we've got a button to add to basket, and then a text area. We haven't seen one of those, but this is uh, an entry object, but it's got multiple lines and a text area where we where we um, record the contents of the basket or we report the contents of the basket to the user. Um, oh, and finally, yes, there's a, finally a read-only text field which just adds up all the, the total contents of the uh, what's in the basket. And there it is. So the most important bit this, of this then is the, the respond function. Um, Sorry, there's two bits. There's, there's the respond function and there's the add to basket function. So the respond button is what happens as you click things in here. So when, as you, you can see, it is, it's reacting as I'm checking the checkboxes or checking the radio buttons or checking the checkboxes. Any of these widgets up here are bound to this respond function. And what, do that, what does that do? Uh, it loops over the... Um, it gets the type of pizza chosen from the um, from the uh, radio buttons. Uh, it creates a description based on the radio buttons and the extra checkboxes, and it calculates the price, uh, and then prints the description to the console. So the user, we do that. So this is, you know, as I'm changing the radio buttons, the, the uh, let's show you that the the console gets the output. The user doesn't need to see this this text here because they can already see it on the on the GUI. But they do need to see the price. And so as we check these checkboxes, uh, the other thing that happens is that it updates the price in the text field. Okay, so we we try and keep the user informed about what their price of what they've chosen is. That's that's one function, but that's very similar to the, the functions that we've seen before for you know working out the price and the description of the pizza. The other function is just the add to basket function. Um, does a similar thing, but this time it creates a, a pizza object. Okay, so this is like what we saw last week when we created pizza, lots of random pizza objects and uh, put them in a in a list. You know, when the user got um, one several pizzas, uh, we create a pizza object. We add the extras to the pizza, and then we put the pizza. So this. Chosen pizza, there is the pizza object, 
created from the pizza type and the pizza price. We add the extras to the chosen pizza, okay? Uh, based on what what the, uh, based on here, what the, um, the checkboxes are set to, and then we add that chosen pizza to the basket. So this is when the users click the add basket button, then this function gets called to add uh, it to the basket. And then finally, um, this uh, this bit of text is a bit. Uh, I never find that these um, these entries are particularly um, easy to understand. Okay, in terms of in terms of changing the text, but what this is doing here, text two is this text field here, this text area rather. So what's this doing here? Text two is. Uh, sets the state to normal so that because normally this isn't editable okay if I try and type in here I, nothing happens I'm typing hitting the keyboard nothing happens so in order to change the text in here I have to make it editable so I set it to normal uh, there and then I delete everything that's what this delete from 1.0 to the end basically 1.0 is the beginning and it deletes from the beginning to the end then it um, constructs the contents by adding, by looping through all the pizzas that are in the basket and adding a description into the contents, description and new line. So loop through all the pizzas in the basket and add a description plus a new line. Uh, also add up the price. And then um, I then insert, that, that's the contents, I insert that into the text field. So that's what this line does here. And then set it disabled so that the user can't then go in and modify stuff in the basket. Okay. So uh, that bit of code, as I say, the, the updating these uh, text areas is not necessarily very um, uh, obvious how to do it, but that's how you do it. You usually you delete the text that's in there and then insert the new text. That's the easiest way. There are other ways. You can append text on the end, but it's easier to to do it like this. Uh, and then finally, the the Output is much easier because that's just controlled by a single variable. We can update the that text field. Okay, and that's uh, that's what happens there. I, as I said, I didn't want to go into this one in too much detail, but uh, hopefully that shows you the ideas behind it. Um, so, what we've seen today then is is how to use TK into uh, in a basic way. So, an introduction. We've seen some basic GUI widgets examples. I say an introduction, but actually, you could, with what we've seen in today's lecture, you can go a long way. You've, you've got all the widgets that you need <clears throat> for most things. So the text field, the button, checkboxes, radio buttons, combo boxes. We even saw some sliders and text areas. Um, that, that, that will take you most of the way. It's, after that, it's just practice. Uh, so it, it is a bit unusual uh, at first, or a bit, um, it's not very, intuitive to build these GUIs sometimes, but essentially, as I said at the beginning, you're just adding a, um, a widget, and then you have a callback function that handles what happens to that widget. Usually the callback function is called by either hitting a return in a, um, in a, a text field or possibly by pressing a button. So you just have to, um, yeah, you have to have practice to get, to get these things to work. But once you get used to it, they're quite, um, they, quite, they make sense eventually. And then we saw the three examples, the Uni app, which is the, the simplest one where we can just send a message to all the users, the Home Hub, which just displays the status but isn't controllable, and the, the Pizza, which is the, the more advanced example where we've got uh, an interface where we can choose things using the, um, the uh, radio buttons and the checkboxes and a button to add things to the basket. OK, I hope you found that um, helpful. and. Uh, you now want to get out there and try to build yourself a GUI. <laughs>